So today is February 27th, right, I believe, and we are going to start our final meeting for Waves, Water, Land, and Sea Level 1. And um, I want to thank you all for joining me, and I did send a link correction to everybody. All right. So for this here, this is Doodle Wash, and there's a gentleman named, a lot of you already know Doodle Wash, and there's a gentleman named Charlie Shields, and he has done an amazing job for the uh, watercolor community. He has a, this a great blog full of information. You may want to check it out. Why I have this picture up here, I was his guest artist this week, and it gives you a little bit of history about myself, and a lot of you can relate to this. And this is just part of my story. So I've got a, I've had a lot of adversity in my life. Well, who doesn't? But as far as on my artistic journey, and I, it's a, where a lot of you can relate. And it's, I would like to do a webinar or something more about this because you know when you think why bother uh, i've been there i know what it's like but i have so much to share on that subject so i'll hold off on that i just wanted you to see this and uh, gives you a lot of history on this and he's got little mini exercises and resources and he also has world watercolor group on facebook and he is the nicest gentleman. So you might really want to check that out if you haven't. All right. And then the other thing I was going to share with you was, let's see, we have our uh, paintings we're going to go over. And I was going to do a little, I'm going to try to do a little mini a video on here because it would really help show you a little bit of how to translate an image in like a photograph into a painting and this is also going to be included in our um, upcoming course so i'll share with that share that with you in just a moment and let's see the upcoming courses just to get that out of the way is our orchids are basically starting tomorrow and we have white flowers those are two courses that are going to be happening in uh, March and then in April we'll do waves and water land and sea level two which is using the photographs and translating them into paintings and then rock sand and sea glass bold rich saturated colors you'll you'll get emails to this so another thing I thought would be really fun is to do a drawing every month and to see um, to give every, get, to give one person a month a, a a chance for a free class. What do you think? Do you like that idea to do a drawing like that? I think it would be fun. Good. I see your little heads nodding. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. And uh, since I was talking about the courses, just to get this out of the way too, your discount for that is save. 2518 and you'll save 25 percent on that the other thing i'm thinking about is doing if you are an instructor and or if you teach a, a school or whatever i'm thinking about doing group discounts so the students can can join in so if if you're interested in that contact me i'll have it more developed as i go along so let's get started and look at the paintings all right let's look at this let's look at all of them very quickly and then we'll go through them and uh, look at them as uh, individuals all right and if you're not talking make sure that you mute your microphone otherwise i have to come out of this and then go back and mute you so you can see that these are all the paintings that have come in. We've got a combination of waves and water and lands, uh, landscapes and clouds and big um, mounding waves. Let's see here. And our marsh scene and the beach scene. 
so you get a good idea of what we're covering because like we mentioned before that everybody's going to be at a different place everybody's working the course at their own speed i just work the meetings of where i assume that most of you will be and then we will look at the ones that are in the past usually at the end of the meeting but since um I, we're just wrapping this up here i think that we can look at all of them at the same time because there's not as many as when we usually have our normal meetings so i'm going to go ahead and get myself out of this so you can see our painting here and what i really loved with that was that intensity of color in this one and you handled the edge of the clouds beautifully you have such a nice color underneath the clouds are very heavy you handled the horizon beautifully back here so it's not distracting your way look really great and I like what you did down here in your whitewater I think that was very successful so one thing I would suggest to you is that this straight line here I would soften the edge in places you don't have to soften it everywhere but just a little bit because that will really help to break that up so let's see if I can do that very quickly for you just so you can see get an idea see like if we just soften that up a little bit I could use a white color. Okay, that, that way we're focusing on the white water on the edges of that instead of that straight line. And if the artist is here and has any questions, you are welcome to ask and unmute yourself. So hopefully you get the idea and you can see what I'm doing here. Just softening a few of these edges. And you can do that either with a uh, brush just soften the edge or use the mr clean eraser and even when it's dry you can soften this up all right that you did a very good job with that all right and then we have our next one here even with this here i'm not sure how the artist feels about it but i really liked this i thought it was very abstracted and we definitely have our cloud line that definition between the edge of the cloud and the dark sky and yes i can see the little blossoms that have happened here but that doesn't necessarily that doesn't bother me what i like is the overall feeling that you have here this dark sky this wonderful cloud edge and that transition of color so you could develop this a little bit more i don't think you're necessarily going to but you've got the right idea and i'd like you just to practice because you're doing a really really good job and so we have a chat let's see if there's the artist in here too and nancy says it's a very moody abstract and yes um it is and that's what i like is that simplicity because when you have something that is more simplistic it becomes more emotional it allows the viewer to come into the painting instead of stating what everything is i think it becomes much more interesting all right so you this was very successful now this is a photograph it's not a painting <laughs> now this one is a painting from that photograph and why i'm showing this to you is that this particular student of mine she wanted to know how to do that photograph how to translate it into a painting and this is her version of it she has come so far in this class and i just wanted to share with you what i see here and what i told her is that she has an, a wonderful job with this smooth wash here and that light lapping water against the shore good job with her shadow down here and the beach one thing i think would be better is not to necessarily have the browns in the background because the brown warmer colors come forward cooler colors recede so it would have been better if it was a little cooler like if we look at let's see if we can get this back here you can see how that is very different and that's what i have is that little video that i'm going to try to share with you at the end now but going back to this one i was very very proud of her when she had her first painting that she showed me they did look like indigo claws and that's how she identifies herself with me because you will never forget that <laughs> and she has come so far 
So here we've got a wonderful job with your sky here. And I love this area over on the far right side. I see like breaking waves, wonderful. And you've got the rocks in here, a lot of action. And it's interesting with this particular course is that we're not trying to paint exactly what we see. We're trying to give it more of that impression and capture the essence, which you did very successfully. I think that this could have had a little more, uh, like what you have here, like on this area, what we're looking at is a rock that's a little more tapered into the ocean. And over here, we could have a little bit more or a little more white water, minor, minor details, but you really got the essence of this. And here, what I liked with this one, we have this um, waterfall, and I don't usually see that many submissions of the waterfall. And this one was very successful. There's a lot of action here. It, you can see the direction that the water is moving. It's moving from the upper right over to the left and then down through the falls here. Very successful. And I always try to stay away from um, too much detail, but I think it works here. This worked nicely over on the far left. She's got a little bit over here in the middle. And then even having that grass on the horizon uh, or on the far side here in the background, that works. That gives a different kind of impression than what was in the actual uh, demonstration, which is fine. I love that when you take what I've done and then turn it into a painting of your own. I also really like the touch of the uh, magentas and purples back there. So that works so nicely, that purple next to that complementary golden color. Very successful. I like that your eye travels through the painting and you've got movement. So congratulations on that. And then uh, here. Birgit, that's fine. The, which one? Um, this one? That, yes, I'm Helen. And Hi, Helen. I, thank you. Uh, I thank you for those comments. Uh, would you suggest a little more um uh sharper darkening on the rocks that are more in the foreground or or defining the uh shrubs that go across the the top of the back in, I, in the definition i would not do any more definition in the back here okay so let that's me think about attention mm. Yes, that's what I think. I think it's going to draw too much attention, but I'm happy with what it, you know, what it looks like now. What are you thinking here? You see now when I look uh, at this, go ahead. I'm concerned that I just have two blotches of green on the left right, and right. wonder if I should put some green up uh, up in those upper reeds that that uh, border the the river. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I looked at that too. I thought about your greens and I thought, does that bother me? And what I really didn't want to see is them going too far back because then I'm going to use this tool. Let's look what would happen if you did. Okay, that could work, but I want you to be careful because then you see our eyes kind of like right in there. Oh, so it does. It, yeah, it makes a circle instead of a depth. Okay, so, but then we could add some of that green. Let me, uh, let's see, try to put it over here. Hold on, I've got to try to move something out of the way so I can see this. So this could work over on this area. Let's go ahead and get those tools back. Okay, so what, okay, if I'm thinking about this and I want to get that green in there, I'm thinking, how am I going to lead the eye of the viewer? We don't want to put it right back here because then we're just looking down here. So we're going to get rid of that. But we want to think about here, here. How do you want the viewer to travel through your painting? And so I'm thinking down here and maybe we'll even add just like a touch, hardly anything there. So now our eye can go from the right to the left and off into the distance. And maybe just a hint of it there. Okay, I see. Uh-huh. Okay, that helps get a better yeah. idea there. And yes. then, so then if we have all this green and you've got all that yellow back there in the trees, I would think, okay, so we're gonna have to bring a little bit of that green in there too, but we don't wanna do too much. So I'm a little hesitant to bring that in there because it can easily go muddy, really muddy. 
but a little bit. What we could do is use that greenish color and try to get a little more, but I don't want to put too much in there. Are you, are you seeing how the, um, what I'm trying to do here, I'm looking at a little bit of depth, trying to pull that green into the rest of the painting. Right, without it becoming a, um, an eye catcher, yeah. Right. But what I really liked is how you handled this. This is beautiful. And you handled that, that little white water, that little dry brush technique right up here looks great. And let's see, I'm thinking I like, so you have a greenish color in your water. So that looks really good too. So yeah, you I put, some I did the phthalo. I, uh, put some phthalo in there. Okay. Now I'm curious. Let's see if we took, let's just play with this. Let's see, the, the green on top of the yellow is going to be okay, but on top of the purple, and what I'd be doing is I'm already looking at the direction that you have in here. I don't, huh? But now I'm starting to feel that I'm flattening it. I've lost a little bit of that depth. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think maybe leaving the green out of the back background mm -hmm. is better. But I like the little bit of the little bit of touch in the reeds. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, but you did a great job through here. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm so glad that you submitted this. And see, I think it's really great this way. But yeah, that little hint of green could work very nicely in here. Okay. So congratulations on that. Oh, go ahead. Did you have a question? I, I, I do not anymore. <laughs> okay. All righty. So then here on this one, that turned out very nicely. I like that soft edge of the clouds, nice mingling and uh, getting that dramatic sky. That is a, a grayish combination here. And I really like how you went darker in the background. So it ended up defining that edge of the cloud that was successful. And this is a very tricky painting. It looks simple, but it's not. And I think you found that through, through all of those lessons. They look really simple, but they aren't as simple. So with this here, um, like I'm always evaluating my composition to you and does it work? Now, this was very successful through here. I think that it does work. I think that we... I'm thinking about this for my own composition, like I mentioned, whether or not I want to have more of a, some land on this side, not to say necessarily for this painting that you've done, but you know, I'm just always thinking, how can I improve it? So that's, well, that's what, that's what, this is mine also. And that's what I was thinking that the bottom, um, bottom and over to the right is really very dull. Yeah. And if a piece, Oops, did I lose you? Hopefully I didn't lose everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, well, I'm gonna continue like you're there. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I just wondered if, if a boat or a, a land or a, a house or a, <laughs> something. Well, I'm concerned by having a, um, uh, uh, when you have a sharp edge, because if you have a boat there, it could go and distract from the painting. But we oh, be could. Here's a couple things. Okay, I'm going to try something here. You could always lift a little color out and just by lifting just a, a hint of it here and there. I like what you've done with the landscape. You don't have to do anything there. I think that this is too much what I'm doing. I'm just making the impression of little houses back here. And to do that, all I would do is cut out. You don't actually even need to cut out anything. If you put, let's say, um, let's imagine this is a piece of tape, right? And here's another piece of tape and put another piece of tape right there and another piece of tape right there. You could use that Mr. Clean and lift out that center. It doesn't have to be this big. It would be small. It could be anywhere. It could be a boat. You know, let's say you have a boat over here or another boat. That way you have a softer look and it's not that defined. Does yeah, that? I've done that. I think that's a good idea. 
Okay, good. Uh, it just looks boring to me. And I just yeah. wondered how I could enliven it. Well, you know, this, it really is what I, it's a picture of uh, the Bellinas channel looking over to Stinson. And I think that it could be more exciting myself. I do like the idea of this. That's pretty nice, but I don't want it to be so defined. So the other option we have is that we can change it. I like, I really like how you handled the land and how you handled the sky and this transition. It all has that a combination of hard and soft edges. It looks really great. But if we ended up taking, uh, like you've got your land there. And there we go. And you could even, I like, I don't really want to change this, but you could always change it like, um, put another piece of land in there. So it becomes more like a channel or you could change it with a beach through there. Mm, mm -hmm. So there's some things that you can do because I agree with you. I think that this area really needs something else. And that would be, I should have given you, you know, I mean, that's what I saw at the time and that's, the vision that I had, but I think that there's always room for improvement. And I do like this idea. I think it gives you an opportunity to play with it. What do you think? I appreciate that because it bothered me. Okay. Does this give you enough of an idea? I think so, Bridget. Thank okay. you very much. I love what you handled, you know, how you handled your sky and your landscape. I think that was very successful, but I agree just something over here. And what you could do is instead of just going in and really um, taking that plunge and lifting color out, I wouldn't nest, I might not. Okay, I'm gonna try one other thing. So let's say you had a, you wanted to put a boat in here. I like mm -hmm. the idea of lifting color out, but if you went ahead and put, uh, let's see, I'm gonna try to get another tool and you had a hard line, I'm trying to give you an idea here. Do you see how that can be a little distracting? Yes, it doesn't it, belong. Right, so it doesn't belong in there. Perfect, that was a great way of saying that. Or here we go ahead and put some other little boats in there. So if you decided that you were going to put boats in there and you wanted to paint them in instead of lifting color out, mm -hmm. then what I would do is let's let's get rid of well, no, let's leave that in there for a second. Uh, what I would do, just to find a spot to compare it to, I would just try to suggest it. I don't have one available for you to see right now. It's put away, but it's only just a, a stroke of color. If I have a chance, I'd like to do, see if I can do a demo, but I, I don't know if we'll have the time to do that. I love demos. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. Let me see where I'm at here. Okay, let's clear this out and I want to make sure I think okay so where we're at I'm gonna just see if I can do a short little demo okay oh let's see if that is I think that'll be okay I want I don't want it to be too far away that you can't see it uh, let's see I think I'll go ahead and try to make it a little bit larger in my stroke so you get the idea. So I'll take whatever color is in my palette because that's not really going to be as relevant. That doesn't really matter right now. We're just looking at technique. I'll move you all over. So let's say we could do a book, uh, not a book, a boat. If I wanted the boat going away from me, I might think about you see, that's a funny little stroke. And just like that, not much. You get the idea? It's not that we're really painting um, a lot of detail. We're making a suggestion. Right, instead of a whole profile of a boat. That, that's much, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
So that that's one way of doing it. Yeah. And then let's say we did okay because I can read either way, either going away or the side. And let's see if we did a boat from the side. Obviously, I'm not much of a boat person. I love boats. I think that they're beautiful to look at. And I'm actually turning the paper more horizontally so I can get a better line and uh, just barely touch the paper. Now there's different ways of doing this. And I'll discuss that in just a second. Okay, so maybe what I'll do, because we'll have our water down here and we're just gonna soften an edge, but we don't necessarily need to soften all the edges. Do you see how I'm just barely touching some of those edges there? And some of those are bleeding and some of them are hard. Yes. You get the idea there. And then, thank you. The other thing that you could do, which is really fun, which I don't have with me, because sailboats have those, uh, those little, like, like, I'm talking like I know about sailboats, right? But I, I believe they have those lines that come down to the side. I've seen them, right? I don't know mm -hmm. what you call those. All right, so instead of taking a brush and then trying to draw it on, because then it ends up being too big and defined, take a tea bag, the string from the tea bag, break off the edge, just get a cotton string, dip it in the paint, okay, hold it oh. tight, and then just dab it on the paper. And then you'll have oh, a fair, isn't that nice? Oh, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it is fun. It's, it's very fun. And what I'm thinking about doing is um, I do have, I, I used to do boats all the time, but I, I may come back in and do a whole course on that. I'd really like to. I just need the time to do it. So uh, is there anything else that you wanted or that you need to see right now on the demo or I'll go back to the actual painting, paintings to evaluate? that's sufficient thank you okay good great i love doing the demos too i think that's fun now this was wonderful too i mean what this was outstanding when we have that the spray and the landscape and the sky and the artist was if the artist is here you are welcome to chime in and uh, i know that you mentioned that you thought maybe it should have a darker sky i think it's Fine. I don't want to see you go darker with your sky. I think your horizon line is wonderful. Your waves are great back there. I like your landscape. That your landscape is not really defined, even though we have a very clear edge of the land, it's not so hard that it's distracting. Let's see, we've got this. You might want to break up that line a little bit, but I'm not too concerned about that. I'll show you where where I think that you might uh you might like to do this it's up to you and you don't have to do it but using what you have already let's really enhance what you have here you've got this beautiful light uh, white water up here and that transparent cresting of it so you may want to just go a tad darker just a little bit down here to encourage that and I'm not too sure about this here because you see that this would be folding over. That's darker down here. I just don't think that we would see that be, I know you're trying to do a barrel and I don't, I don't know. It's just right in here, I'd like to encourage more of that coming through because you have so much action in the middle here and this is wonderful in this area and over here. I might go a little darker there and this looks awfully calm down here. That didn't really bother me, but I really want to show this off, this area that you have, beautiful right through here and this crashing wave on this area. So. Let's see, you don't have any white water going through here. So let's see, I'm just thinking about, I just, I, I, all I have to do is go down to the beach and see it, and I'm trying to uh, visualize it in my head. So what I'm trying to do is just grab a little bit of a line that goes off to the edge a little bit more. 
And you may have a photograph or something that, that uh, would be more relevant, but I'm, I'm trying to use the shape what I see and how to give it more action. That's what I'm thinking about. Okay, so I'm dragging that over a little bit more so it encourages it over to the side. And sometimes, like, um, I'll talk about the Bolinas channel for a second. We can have some waves coming in and that if it's a channel, you won't really see it crashing so much here. But I kind of like that a little bit better and I'm wondering if we, because I know that you don't have any whites left here. So I'm just trying to get a little more of that action to go down into the beach. Hopefully that helps because I really want to show off that lighter transparent area of the wave. So I don't think we have the artist here, otherwise they would be uh, dropping in. And let's see, uh, you could break up that line a little bit if you wanted to, but this was wonderful, wonderful painting. So congratulations to the artist on this. Okay, and we looked at this one last week. Let's see which one. She brought, she sent in another one. I think this is the one she did. So last week we were talking about going a little darker up here, trying to get some definition in here. And she didn't do that, which was I'm very happy with, but let's see what she did do. Okay, she went a little darker down here. It also looks like the lighting's a little different from when she took this, but it's still, it's such a wonderful mounding wave a lot of action through here. She also spattered a little more masking, or not masking, but uh, uh, I think gouache or white watercolor up here. So she did a great job, wonderful. If you, let's look at all of this, uh, the different values through here. That really works, especially through here. And you can see a little bit of that foam mingling with the different values, so very successful painting. And then here again, great job. I was a little concerned with that yellow right in there, but I do love that. I, I love how this worked. She's got the same landscape, that Stinson Beach one that has that channel. And again, I would suggest uh, doing something down here. Now, what would happen is if I'm looking at a painting like this, I'm thinking, what is already there? What can I work with? So what shapes can I bring out? So what I could do is see this little shape, but then I'm a little concerned that that may match this too much. So we could try to add a little bit of a beach through here. And then now we have, it's broken up this, this bottom part, it's made it more interesting. And if you wanted to add a boat or anything, or even, let's see, I'm thinking a lighthouse would be interesting, even though there is no lighthouse, but if you did in, uh, put a lighthouse in there, don't put it right in the middle, because then that will be distracting. I don't know why I thought of a lighthouse, I don't usually do that. But, and this is a lot of white, uh, lighter color in here, so let's add some darker values We've got this darker color up there that works nicely through here. What I might do is just play with the brush stroke a little bit. I don't, I don't want it necessarily this dark, but to give you an idea, or like you see this lighter value right through here and that little bit of darker value, I might try to encourage this to become a wave and add a little bit of darker color right through here. And you all remember the belly of the brush. So I'm gonna, draw a picture of a brush here. So I would actually turn my painting upside down and I would use, this would be the tip of the brush and then this would be the handle. I would drag the belly of the brush along that edge right there to try to pull that out a little bit more and get more contrast. So let's get rid of that imaginary brush. And you see how that breaks it up a little bit more? Hopefully that reads well. Okay. And then this one too, even though 
Uh, we don't. It's the same composition of the Stinson Beach thing. What I really liked was the simplicity of this. I loved the color. It has a dark blue sky and it's got that very defined cloud and a, a nice neutral transition of the landscape coming down into the foreground. And this could either be foreground, the ocean here in the foreground can either be the ocean or you can turn it into land, whatever you like. I like it simplistic as is. I think you've done a very successful job. I really like how you handled your horizon here. One thing I'd like to see you do in the future is be careful with either pressing too hard or, let's see, what I'm talking about are the brush strokes in the background right here. So it looks like you might be going back over color while it is still damp. And then what happens is it, it doesn't really have an opportunity to lay on top of it. It just starts to separate. It's just too many brush strokes, but that is really a minimal, minimal, um, thing about this painting and that works fine for what you've done here it has a very loose feel to it so hi just there, this is Anne. Yeah. hi Anne. is this yours yeah you know i really got the clouds kept leaking they leaked? <laughs> i almost lost them because i got it's so wet that you know it was uh, you can see over there on the left it's kind of they almost disappeared or i guess the over right here but, yeah over there uh-huh <laughs> so it got really overworked, yeah. But well, I guess the, pro the problem I'm having is if we go in after it's dry and we're adding, we're trying to darken it, then it seems like it's hard to keep it uh, from forming lines. Well, every layer that you apply, the color is not gonna move the same way. So mm -hmm. it can be tricky. So when you do that, make sure you have a soft brush. Otherwise you can lift a little bit of the color out. Or if you use staining colors, it's going to be less likely to do that. So the stain, staining colors are usually the uh, fallows, but then you have a very vibrant sky and it might be too bright. I like what you've done. And this doesn't bother me, this area over here. I like the combination of that defined edge and that um, dissolved edge on this side. What I'd like you to be careful about, and, and we're gonna see a couple more of your paintings in a moment, is that the edge doesn't stop too abruptly. I also yeah. re really like what you've done here, is how you have that nice transition and that highlight. Did you lift this area out back here? Yeah, the way that you suggest with the modeler. Uh, Love breath. it. I love it. You did a great job. I love that because it has that um, just a suggestion. So you know it's there. You've got the contrast from the landscape with the the clouds. Even though the uh, the horizon goes down. I mean, if I really have to try to think think about it, really, <laughs> it's not oh, straight. <laughs> well, you know, no, no, no. It's about picking picking away at it. This. You know, I'm thinking, oh, well, if I really want to overanalyze it, well, the horizon line should maybe travel more over here. But I really like what you've done through here. I think. What? Remember when. Uh oh. Did you just disappear? Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. There you are. Oh. So remember, we did one that was just ultramarine, very heavy on the burnt sienna, and you remember you did a line right through the middle like that. Uh, oh, yes. Well, yes. At the workshop, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So and we you, kind of stopped it about three quarters of the way, actually. Yeah, but you know what? This There is no part of this that bothers me. And okay. I, I, so I think that just like all of us, the worst judge is gonna be ourself. And so, I would basically leave this alone and walk away. I don't really want to see you do anything else because I think that you'd be going in and fussing with it and your line would come in on dry paper and it would look overworked and labored. And I like that loose style that you've got here. In fact, we just got a comment from Laura and she says she loves <laughs> these looser paintings. And she also asked, how can a tight painter loosen up a little bit? So there's a, a couple ways of doing that, is using larger brushes, more water, and I'm gonna do, I'll only do a demo about that in just a second. Make a note about demo here. And uh, I'll show you in just a second. So, 
okay, let me get back to this. So Anne, I think that this is good. I think you're being way too hard on yourself because I think you might usually do a little more control, right? I think we lost Anne. Okay. All right. Well, Anne, congratulations. This looks great. <laughs> and if you come back in, that's just uh, chime in again. And what I like about this one here, we have a waterfall. I think we're having a very challenging internet connection right now. Uh, it seems like we've lost quite a few people and then it comes back. In fact, we're at the top of the hour. I know that we started a little bit late because we had some technical difficulties. So for anybody that's leaving us, I want to thank you so much for joining me during the, the last six weeks. I've really had so much fun with all of you. I'm going to continue to do a few of these paintings here. And then if you'd like to stick around, I'll do a little demo. Not, well, I'll do the little demo. And what I will also do is show you that little video. So uh, for those of you that are leaving, thank you so much and happy painting to you. So I'm going to continue on. And let's go back to this painting here. All right, I like the looseness that you handled with your brush strokes in here. Very good job with that uh, flat brush. Great, great job in here. And I like how your eye travels from here to over on the right to the left, on the rocks, all the way through the painting. Very successful. Nice water. And I like the combination of hard and soft edges. Don't do anything else to it. So I'm just curious, you could think about in the future, not to this one, is I have to be careful with this too. It could get a little carried away with some hard edges back there. This I think is a perfect balance. And here I like this one too. This is also a challenging painting to have the marsh and those cirrus clouds coming across and that little bit of landscape in the distance without, um, getting too overworked. What I like with this is that we have the marsh grass here and they've done an excellent job of softening a little bit of the top and a little bit of the bottom. So that way we have a broken line, we've got some definition, but then it has a little bit of that softer haze to it. Excellent job. Great job with the reflection of the sky and the water and the clouds are wonderful. Very soft, beautiful. All right, and then here we have uh, the last two paintings. Now, uh, now let's, I'll show you, this is what we looked at, and then this is what I suggested. So if you can see, this line here is a little bit more like a horseshoe, right there. And I do love your reflection. I think you did a fantastic job, and a great job with your sky and your landscape here along with your dry brush technique in the water here. So this edge right here, I wouldn't have it stop so abruptly. Mm. Let's look at okay. that for a second. So when you're doing that, I would try to taper it more. Yeah, well that was the one where, again, I tried to make it darker and that's when I got the abrupt line. Yeah, it's- the First wash was okay. It'll just take practice. And even yeah. with all the practice I've had, it can be a challenge for myself too. So just know that. And let's go on to the, this one here. So you see, I personally yeah. like that shaping a little bit better. Yeah, I agree. Okay, <laughs> good. I got too excited about my wet sand. <laughs> As you should. I, I've been looking a lot at wet sand lately and uh, I know what you mean, and you, you've done a beautiful job capturing that sky and landscape in that wet sand. But uh, let's see, and then here we could add, I'm starting to get a little carried away in the drawing that I was doing, so I didn't want to make it too crazy. So let's see, you could try to get a little more definition in here, but you, you just get the idea. It basically is the reshaping through there. Well, I wasn't sure about. Oops, I lost you again. I'll, I'll continue this while I'm waiting for her to come back. Are you there? There yeah. she is, yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I'm not sitting close enough. Anyway, I was, yeah, I wasn't sure about how to do the transition from the beach to the mountain. Yeah, 
so that shape I think works and to have you see the little bit of broken lines like this the darker or yeah just a little well you know what you've done looks great just this is just an idea you see what I'm yeah. saying a little bit of broken lines hard edges here and there and then right down here I wanted to define your wave a little bit more I lost so, it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so well, what, what, are you doing the, these broken lines with the tip of the brush? Uh, I'll let me do a demo. I'll do, that'll be easier. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So you see how that way we have our water. So I'm going to go ahead and yeah. clear that out. So I'm going to do a demo on, now I forgot what I was doing when I was going to do one on the broken lines. And if you remember what I was doing, the, I just wrote demo. I should have written what I'm doing the demo on. Let's see, I can go through these very quickly to see, oh, um, that line, I think. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah? It was about loosening up painting style. Oh, thank you, okay, great. Thank you. All right, so hopefully I don't forget by the time I get from here to there. I'm gonna to try to get back into the, uh, let's see, I have to get into the camera. Okay, so we, let's say we have a straight line like that. You take a brush that is with clean water, damp, get rid of some of the excess so it doesn't blossom back and go out of control and just soften an edge or two. Okay, so that way we can still see it, but it doesn't stand out. Like if we look at this being softer compared to, see how that gets a little distracting. It can be. You get the idea? We want to play with those strokes. Hopefully that helps. Now for getting looser, there's a couple ways of doing that. And I don't have great color in here right now, but I'll just use what I have. You can use a larger brush like that, or you could use even a, if I really do some uh, loose paintings, what I've been enjoying painting with is, I'm gonna grab them. Our more natural brushes. And, like uh, also what do we call these these are escotas are nice or squirrel brushes like that so you can see that they're they're a little plump on the end and they hold a lot of water in color so it, it floods an area a lot of water and color. So it does this brush here, which is a sable synthetic blend, you can see you get more control over it. This one's going to have a lot more water in there. And another thing you can do, let's say you go ahead and put your painting in like that, or a flower, whatever, whatever you want to do. And then use a brush that has a lot of water and soften some of those edges. That ends up, I'll, I have a little demo done on it, but uh, I think I'm going to redo it. I did one of a sunflower, so I'll work more with that. You, can you see how floppy this brush is? Does that help answer that question that you had? I mean, these are not ideal colors right now. I wasn't necessarily prepared for that particular one uh, question. Does that help you? Whoever asked that question? It's Laura. I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, now I can hear you. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, it does. Um, I have that number 30 brush. Okay. Yes. So, and that's a soft brush, right? Cause, right. And that would be good to just paint more with that? Yes. So what happens is it's, what you may want to do if it's finding the balance because you could go from here. If you go from here to here, this can apply a lot of water and you're going to get a lot of runs, a lot of blossoming color. So what I, you're going to practice 
water here, releasing some of the water, getting rid of some of that. That still holds a lot of water like this, and then you can soften some edges. You have a little more control. It's not just flooding the surface. Or you can go from here, get rid of some of that water, and here, removing more water. It all depends how loose you want it to be. Does that give you a better idea? It's a little, it's just practice, really. Being bigger and looser, so. Bigger and looser. That's what I want to try. <laughs> well, I love that idea. So what I'm thinking about is, um, okay, so it is uh, just a little, are you, are you ready to hang out and see that little video and see if I can translate that? Would you like to see that? I'll show it to you. And I also, you know, I'm going to show you my studio over here, just so you can see what it looks like over in that corner. You see those paintings? Those are big guys. All right. So let's get over to that little video. I'm going to see if this works for you. Okay. So anyway, that is actually going to be a lesson in one of the, uh, in that course, the photographs to paintings. And I'm really disappointed that I'm not able to share that with you the way I intend. So it'll be, it'll be much easier if it's in the course, that way it's on your internet connection and not necessarily the way um, this is. I'm curious, maybe I can put it in the meeting and then, uh, you know, just so it runs smoothly instead of trying to watch it on the internet. So maybe I'll be able to do that. I'll work on that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm going to miss all of you. I really am. I just so enjoy seeing your familiar faces and, um, you know, just stay in touch with me and you can always enter more um, compositions in. And so first of all, before you go, I'm going to Thank everybody. I'm going to end the meeting, but I'll be right back here. I just want to thank you all for joining me for the six weeks here. And uh, I'm going to try to end this. Actually, I just, it's not going to help. I got that microphone. I was going to try to mute that. That didn't help <laughs> because then you wouldn't be able to hear me. <laughs> oh, gosh. All this. So, so all this. I just wanted to thank you all. So, I mean, it's been immeasurable what i've i've learned it's, it's been just great just watching and and just soaking it all in and it's it's been wonderful thank you so much thank you carolyn and you know i want you to all uh, to notice like all the little mistakes that i make or uh, and just trying something and then having a problem with it that's how i approach the painting and that's what you should do too don't try to be perfect because when you try to be perfect, then you don't explore. Be willing to make those mistakes and see what happens. And really, everything comes with just practice. Thank you for me also. Thanks, Karen. Everything was wonderful. Always learning. Thank you. And you take care of yourself. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm going to miss all of you. And I hope to see you in a future class. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks again. Thanks.